This is the fate of Nigel Harrison. He says he was ripped off by the unscrupulous used car salesman defendant, and he wants his money back. He bought a ticking time bomb from the guy. One day after he got it, the thing wouldn't start, and he's not going to allow the defendant to get away with ripping him off. He's suing for $1,000, the amount he's owed. This is the defendant, Bill Christos. He says the plaintiff bought a car and thinks he can return it. Sorry, but it doesn't work like that, and he should read his contract. He's also sorry the guy's mommy and girlfriend don't like the car. He's been in the car business a long time, and if anyone's actually owed money today, it's him. He's accused of unloading a lemon. The defendant is filed a countersuit for $2,500 for the balance owed on the deposit and a loss of business. All parties, please use your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket. The plaintiff says he bought a car from the defendant that was a ticking time bomb. It blew up the day after he bought it. But the defendant says it's all about the plaintiff's mommy and girlfriend not liking the car. It's the case of whip over the whip. Thank you, Douglas. You're Nigel Harrison? Yes. You are suing Power Motor Group Incorporated, represented here by Bill Christos. You are the vice president? Correct. For a $1,000 deposit that you had placed on a car that you bought. Yes. You are counterclaim against him an additional $500 that he still owes you on that same car. Correct. Plus $2,000 for loss of business. Because Correct. according to you, he made a scene. Tell me what happened here. I saw him online. He was selling a Honda Accord Coupe. That's what I wanted. I went down. I test drive the Coupe. He said, you want to put a $100 deposit to hold the coupe? I said, no. I said, I'll be back in a week and so forth. He said, in the meantime, we'll do the paperwork. So he called me after a week and said, you're approved. He, called, he asked me how much money I was working with. I said, $1,000. So after he told me, I, th I told him 1000 he said, you're approved, and the loan expired on Tuesday. I said, I'll be there that Tuesday. Uh, so I went down to Tuesday. He said, if, I don't, if you don't like anything on my lot, I'll try to get you that coupe that you wanted. I said, okay, I, when I went, I picked the... What do you um, mean, get you the coupe? That coupe had already flown the coupe, right? Yeah, like that the, coupe yeah, was yeah, gone. Yeah, the Honda coupe. Okay, coupe so it. just get you another one, but how do you know that that's a good... Is this a brand new car, or is this no, a used car? No, these are all used. Well, then every, car, every used car is a different car. Wouldn't you want right. to test drive it and right. everything? Exactly. All right. Well, well with this one, um, he said I'm approved. <clears throat> I picked the car. He told me to sit in it. So I sit in it. He said, you like it? He said, yeah. He said, come on, let's do the paperwork. Did so, you test drive the car? Nope. He just turned it on. We turned, we turned Why it on. Why didn't you just test drive the car? Well, I, I assume he had him some integrity. He was being fair. Why wouldn't you test drive a used I car you're have. buying? I, sh I should have. Yeah, it's nothing I, to do with I, him. Don't blame it on him. That's ridiculous. Right. Okay, go on. And um, I mean, you're a grown man. You're not an 18-year-old kid. Well, correct. Um, I went in. We did the paperwork. While we were doing the paperwork, I said to him, the car is $7,000. I said, what's the total cost when all this financing is done? He said, don't focus on that. Let's focus on the monthly payment. Well, Come of course back. he's saying that. He's trying to get uh, your money. He's yeah. trying to make a sale. Yeah, he said, That's Come. his job. But what, did you say to him, no, I do want to know the total cost with well, financing? I, I, or you just said, oh, okay, I'll just No, I was just silent. Paper. And he said, Come back in a year and we refinance. I know, but don't you want to know right now, just in case refinancing doesn't work? Should I should ask the, him. Oh, you said, think? Well, it was a. Uh, what was it totally going to cost? Because it's a special finance situation, uh, the car is eleven five seventy five. So it went from seven fees. to uh, to eleven five. It was never seven. It was never seven. No, how no. much is the car? Eleven five seventy five. Oh, how much was the deal price. with the financing? How much would he end up paying? Oh, all the way out after yeah, he pays the, the loan. All the way out. This is going to cost him twenty two thousand seven hundred forty nine dollars. Twenty two thousand dollars. So the eleven thousand was going to cost him twenty two. Why so much? Twenty three point nine nine. Is his credit bad? Yes. Very bad. Very, 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 very bad. I had to lend the money to help him buy the car. Maybe he shouldn't be buying a twenty-two thousand dollar car. That's his decision, not mine. Of course it is, because he's the one who's going to fail on the bank, not not on you. You not just a you just have five hundred dollars, and then you got the loan from the bank, and the bank ended up thinking he's a good risk because they think that he gave fifteen hundred dollars instead of one thousand. Does the bank know that you loaned him? A third of the money down. Absolutely. All right, so what happens? You take the car and what I, I happens? Take the car, take the car home. While going home, it was making a lot of noise. Also, when I get, got home, I went inside the house for 15, 20 minutes. I came back outside to leave, and the car was dead. I said, whoa. I got on the phone, and I called his office. They said it was like close to 6 o'clock. They're closing up. I spoke to a gentleman by the name of Mike. Mike said for me to shake the steering wheel and press on the brake, and the car will start. I did just that, and the car started. I decided to bring the car back because prior, when I went, when he was leaving the, um, the lot, one of his guys that he sent to inspect the vehicle was shaking his head. 
And I said, this guy got me. So basically, I went down, gave him several reasons I don't want the car. What are the several reasons? I told him my family didn't want it, my parents didn't want it. Why didn't your family want it? Well, I told him the car, basically, the way it sound, the way it smell, and what took place where the car is like an old-fashioned television. You got to hit it to make it stomp, comes comes on. I said, for the money, what this guy wants, it doesn't make any sense. So um, he told me- They gave you a lot of grief, right? Yeah. When and you showed them the paperwork and they yeah, saw that you were that yeah. you had that you had bit where you were basically paying a hundred percent in financing. I mean, I don't even know how else to. And they say I got call. a brand new car for that deal, yeah. and basically, um, he might not have. He got very gangster, and now I decided to call the police. Wait, who got gangster? He told me to get off the lot, and I said to him, I don't want the car. He said, the loan is in your name. Get off my lot. I don't do business like this. I've been doing business for 30 years. I also own pro apartment building, real estate. I don't do business like this. And show me on my contract. I said, you never told me as his. He said, I don't do business like that. And well, did you read your contract? No, I didn't. Okay, because you have a warranty. He has a warranty, right? So this is an 84,000-mile car that'll have a 30-day warranty on it. Okay. 30-day, 1,000-mile New York State statute. Did you give him more of a warranty than no. that? No. What's a Win Deluxe warranty? Oh, then it is, yes. Then he has yes, a warranty. He has an 18 month warranty, right? You see it somewhere? Okay. Yeah. You see about the Win Deluxe. You charge him for the Win Deluxe warranty. I wasn't aware of that. <laughs> okay. Okay. So he doesn't have a 30 day warranty. He has an 18 month warranty, right? Okay. So you, he comes, what does he tell you is the reason why he wants to return the car? That he doesn't like it, and his mother and uh, his girlfriend really need to have him give the car back. Why? And, uh, I, Really didn't get into more than that because at that point in time, a day after, after explaining to him 100%, just let me go back a little yeah, bit. Ahead. Mr. Harrison every week would contact me and promise that he was coming down, coming down, coming down. To I do what? There was to, no car. To buy a car. Was... To buy a car. To buy he any to, car. To buy a car. He needed wheels. I'm, I'm going to help him out. I'm a nice guy. No, you're not. You're a guy no, who's in business. Please I'm a don't, nice person. Please do not tell me. Just like when he says, I didn't test drive it, I thought he had integrity. Please don't tell me you're selling him a car because you're a nice guy. This is well, your business. Yeah, but I'm a nice guy in my business. There are people that don't do it nice. I'm a nice person. I went to his house and picked him up. Yeah, because uh, you know what? The, this... Go ahead. I, I don't see how I'm that so could be I'm so torn bad. <laughs> when I talk to people like you because here's the thing. I understand that a guy like him can't get wheels if he has really bad credit. And Correct. so you're the one place he can go to. I'm but it you. breaks my heart that of all the people who, the people who cannot afford to pay 100% more than what the car is being sold for in financing is that person right there. And yet th that kind of person is always a person who will end up in these kind of contracts. But you know, and then I stop myself and say, well, that's a little paternalistic of you, Marilyn, or maternalistic, because the truth is the, the alternative for you is no wheels. Correct. So I get it, I understand it, but please don't tell me that you're saving America. You're not, you're in it to make a buck. I don't deny you that. What? So don't snow me on that. So if you buy a car, and a uh, used car, and it literally falls apart, doesn't work the next day, can you undo the deal? No, I don't think so, because um, you sold it as is, so you buy it. I know, but at a point, the next day? Next time, nines out of 10 times, you're gonna be, it's you buy it as is. Well, it is as is, but come on, the next day? No, nah, you bought yourself a lemon. you got to get over it. Don't be so aggressive with oh, me. <laughs> Going inside the courtroom. So what happens? A guy comes keep, in. Keep in mind, the he rate. He spends every, that, every week coming in and telling you, I want a car. He doesn't come in. He keeps calling me every week. I want to deal with you. You're a nice guy, Bill. Mr. Nigel, I'll come to your house and pick you up. If you can't get here, not a problem. We have three days left in the approval. Okay, Bill comes down. I send my porter to go get him. We pick him up. Everything's fine. I showed him a few vehicles, not one car. I didn't say this is the only car you can have. We walked the lot together as a manager. I took Mr. Harrison myself. There was no salesman involved. He picked the car that he drove out of the lot with. He didn't even uh, test drive it, did he? That's his, yeah, he didn't want to. He was in a rush. He had to get don't out. Don't you think I don't that know. that's odd? Nah, believe you it or not. You don't think that's incredibly unimportant? No, nah, believe it or not, it happens more than you think. I've been doing this 30 years, Your Honor. I've seen some crazy stuff in my business. and No test driving? Yeah, of maybe 50% of the people test drive cars. Mm. It's just one of these weird facts. No test driving yeah. of the car. And, and just now I can address the no start. The no start that did take place at 7 o'clock that evening while we were leaving, and Micah did take that phone call, was a lock steering wheel. It wasn't a malfunction of the vehicle. And then from that day, I haven't heard a problem with the vehicle. Okay, now he, but he comes in the next day. And now he starts to cause a scene. So now I have a problem. Now I have 
Michael with a customer trying to sell a car. I have Nigel calling me a thief and a liar in front of a customer that's leaving me a deposit to buy another car. We lose that deal, hence the countersuit. All right, here's the thing. You come the very next day, you go somewhere, and they tell you the car needs $2,200 worth of work. Yes. Who did you go to to get that the very next day? The mechan a mechanic. So well, the, the same you... guy who does, slow your roll, let me do my job. The same guy who doesn't test drive a car, mm -hmm. takes a car to a mechanic the very next day to, to write up something that says estimated repair cost $2,200. Yes, Your Honor. What did they say was wrong with it? Well, they said the alternator. Okay, hold on. Is the alternator covered under warranty in the wind package? Probably would have been, yeah. It is. Now, right. question number one, he has the wind deluxe package, right? Okay. Tell me, go ahead and show that to him, whether the alternator is under warranty. I think it says it right here where well, you highlighted it. I'm well, glasses. I need your answer. Yes is the I answer. I want your answer on the record. Yes is the answer on the record. Yes. The alternator's under warranty. Correct. And it's under warranty for the next 18 months from whatever, the date of purchase. Whatever the contract was, yes. Can you look at it and tell me if it's 18 months? Yeah, it's typically what we offer. No, 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 no. In this deals. case, I need to hear it from your lips. How long is the warranty? 18 months. Okay. Now, the next thing that your repair friend says is that the car needs a timing belt. Is the timing belt under warranty? Without reading all these things, the answer would probably be no. No, you're going to stand there and read it, and we're going to wait, and I highlighted it, so I, take yes, a look at it. Just, yes, it is. You see it, right? I, I, I it's under warranty. Put your glasses lines. on. Give the man some glasses. I don't right. have them. So that's under warranty. The third thing your friend says is chain guider? Chain guide right. are worn. Is the chain under warranty? No, it's not. Look at the yellow. It's, it is. It is there, too? Okay. Yeah. No, give it to Mike if you can't see it. <laughs> I would have been prepared if I knew there was a bill outstanding that he wanted to claim on. There's no bill. It's just an estimate. And I don't know if he ever even brought this to you or if he went to. No, he did never you go it after to me. Yes, seeing I him? Yes, I went to After speak. seeing him in preparation yes. for court. So you never yes. sent this to him? No, I, was in, I spoke to him about it. Did you have this when you went to yes. see him? Did no, you I didn't have that with me at night, no. Did you, then you come back at one. Yeah, and, I didn't have that with me. Okay, no. so you didn't have it no, didn't have when it you me. went no, to his no. lot. Only when I went to the I thought So I you the got this, yeah. and then did you ever tell him, here, is, here, these are the things that are wrong with it? I told or him. Or did you just prepare this for court? No, I told him what was wrong with it, and basically he didn't want to deal with me. He wanted his 500. Okay. Now, where are we? The, by yeah. the way, the answer is yes, right? The yes. chain is covered too? Isn't this a happy day? <laughs> it would turn out that everything wrong with your car is under warranty anyway. Where's the car now? You still have the car. Right? Yeah, yes. Did you make that $500 payment then? No. Okay. And did you, and Mayfit came and went. Did you make the payment to the bank? No, I, 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 what happened is on the 7th, I called the loan company Credit Acceptance and told them how he um, did the deal. I spoke to an agent by the name of Amber. She told me that the deal shouldn't have happened because I didn't give him $1,500. He advanced me and he didn't discuss the okay. advancement. Now, how does this change a contract you have with him? You sign a contract and you have what's called buyer's remorse the next day. That's it. And this isn't even an as is case. Every single thing that you have mentioned that is wrong with the car is in fact under warranty. Go take the car there and get it fixed, but that's your car. Get it fixed first and then sell it if you want. But you have an 18 month warranty. See, I am a nice guy, Your Honor. You sold him the 18-month warranty. He paid for the 18-month yeah, warranty. It may have not been there. And yet, you know what? If you were a really nice guy, you know what you would have done? You would have said to him, tell me what's wrong with the car. And when he told you, you would have told him, instead of like going, you would tell him, let's sit down, let's figure this out. Oh, you know what? All these things are under warranty. Bring the car in if there's really a problem. But, but the, you know, the, this is under your name. What do you think? Is it? You, know, you know how this works. You understand what financing means. They paid him for the car already. Right. They paid him his money. You owe it to the bank now. Mm. And if you don't pay it, they come after you. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is not working out for you, Nigel. Um, Mr. Harrison, here's what's going to happen. Oh, you have a counterclaim against him for the $500, uh, and you are not getting your $1,000 deposit back. So no on that. But yes, you deserve the $500 that he is already overdue. And this is your car. And understand that you have a warranty and that all these things that are wrong with it, go take it over there to get fixed. Make them do it. So, Mr. Harrison, on your lawsuit against them for the return of the $1,000, the answer is no. And on your counterclaim against him for $2,500, I'm ruling in your favor only in the $500 balance that is owed to you that is overdue, frankly, at this point. That is my judgment. Good luck, folks.
So in a fascinating case that really should be seen by anybody buying a used car, the defendant, if you'll step over here, the plaintiff has just stepped out of the courtroom. Uh, you lost the case. Uh, first off, how do you feel about losing it? I, what, what's your reaction? Well, I think um, justice wasn't served. But it wasn't. But the car's still under warranty. You know that. The car, well, I was told by the mechanic every year I'm going to have a problem with it. The well, it doesn't good. matter. The car is under warranty. You can get it fixed now for 18 months. Doesn't that make you feel better? You didn't no, know that. I don't want the car. You don't want, but you got it. Yeah, stuck You're stuck with it. Yeah, for the time. Yeah, and you got to pay for it. Yeah. So what are you going to do? Well, one day at a time. Okay. Well, good luck. Sorry yeah. about it. That's the way it works here in the court system. Now the uh, defendant's on his way out of the courtroom. The judge started off telling you you weren't a nice guy. <laughs> I'm a great guy. But, but I help you people don't seem out like such time. a bad guy. No, thank you very much for noticing that. Okay. I mean, I'm here on behalf of all the car dealerships yep. that have a bad rap for absolutely no reason. We help people all the time getting cars and helping them through tough situations. And I think we don't get the, the acknowledgement that we should. All right. Well, very good. Congratulations. Thank you very much. You win the case. Have a great day. Okay. Harvey? Okay, real simple. It is insane not to test drive the car and take it to a mechanic. Okay. <laughs>